culture first before I talk about him individually. He was a nomad, born around about 1935, and they were born in the bush. There was no birth dates or records, so it's always difficult to tell them. You know, when you ask, an Aboriginal ask when he or she is born, you try and associate it around something else that happened around the same time. So that's how we try and define when he was when he was born. He lived a nomadic lifestyle um, with his mother and his father and his extended family. He sadly lost his mother early on. He doesn't actually <coughs> remember, didn't remember his mother, and, and tears welled up in his eyes when he started to think about it. So that's something that was very dear to him. Then he lost his father at the age of seven years old. Um, he died when they were walking from one water hole to another water hole. Now these people, they were forced to be nomadic people because first of all, the infrequent rainfall throughout the Western Desert meant that they couldn't grow crops. That was a really big thing. Also, no Australian animals could be domesticated. So when you put those two things together and then you look at their lifestyle, that's why they were nomadic. They formed small groups, they, they had a certain amount of area. What's really amazing and still fascinates me today is they never left their area. They had to walk north a couple of thousand kilometres and would have had fish from the sea, they would have had turtles and eggs, but they didn't. The reason why they didn't is because of their, what they call their jugula, and now we call it the dream time. Tommy, in his, in his early years, uh, worked as a, um, he built uh, wells on stations. He built stockyards. He helped put the metal poles up on Uluru. So he had a series of jobs just to learn to earn a living. He never had children. He was married. But he did have an extended family, which he looked after. In the early days, he travelled to Uandamu. He, he met Albert Namajira, one of the original great artists of this country. He painted watercolours. He saw Namajira working in Hermesburg and Papania. He was also in Papania when the early Papunya artists started to put all their magnificent works down on boards, so he was well aware of the art too. Having said that, he never started to paint until he was in his 60s. Unusual, but when you look at the, the amount of elderly people that actually start to paint in their later years, it's not unusual. And it's, I, I never, I was talking to people today, I've never really understood why a lot of these artists do their best work in the, in the last sort of five years. Of their life. It's almost as though they're trying to get everything, all their stories out, put it down, you know, to support their people.